Adam Copeland promo. Mm. As uh, we explained earlier, the top two men in the rankings are both challenging Samoa Joe, which is Adam Copeland. Well, let's start, number- start at the beginning. The, the whole point of the promo, the first thing that he's asked is, you are ranked third... What champion would you like to challenge? Okay, that's the whole point of the promo. So then what does he explain? Well, first, he wants to send a warning to Nicholas and Matthew. Uh, he's also sickened by what they did on, uh, to Sting. And if he had been there, it wouldn't have gone down that way. Now he says he could challenge Eddie Kingston for the whatever belt he had, Continental Triple Crown gimmick. Uh, that's going to happen, but then there's also Christian Cage. He wants to fight him as well. Then he is interrupted by Daniel Garcia, who comes out to abject silence. When Lance and I were trying to get our mic working and one of them wasn't working, that's what it sounded like, a a broken mic when Garcia comes out here. So he says, uh, you've picked up a lot of wins, Mr. Copeland. I have also picked up a lot of wins. And I beat the patriarchy last week. Christian's got that belt on his shoulder. I thought maybe I deserve a shot of that TNT title. This, this is when I was losing my mind. This is Mm -hmm. not fucking nitpicking, okay? We have rankings for a reason. The point of this promo is, you're ranked third, who do you want? He says Christian. Daniel Garcia, who is unranked, comes out and says, well, you've won a lot and I've won a lot. Maybe I should get a shot at Christian. Bro, (laughs) you're fucking unranked. You're unranked. If you want a shot at Christian, win more until you're ranked higher than Adam Copeland. He's yep. ranked number third, and he's asked, who do you want? So this guy comes out, and he says, well, I want Christian. So Adam Copeland, for reasons I cannot explain, does not say, hey, buddy, fuck you, you're unranked. He goes, oh, well, you know, maybe the two of us should have a match, and then the winner can go face Christian. And I'm like, What? What? Why the fuck would you offer that? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And then he gets angry about it. He goes, you're trying to take food off my family's table. I'm going to beat so your ass. And I'm like, first off, if you're that bad with money, there's a big problem. Yeah. Second off, if you're so fucking angry, then why don't you tell the guy you're unranked, too fucking bad, go win some goddamn matches. So yeah, the rankings made this worse. Worse, if there were no rankings, if there were no rankings, and they said, Edge, what's next for you? And he goes, you know, I want to face Christian. I've been winning a lot lately. And then Garcia comes out and goes, you know what? I've been winning a lot lately, too. So fuck off. I want Christian. You've had a shot and you lost. And then Edge goes, well, fine. Let's do it next week. Great. Perfect. But as soon as you put the rankings in and Edge is ranked number three and the other guy's unranked, it makes the whole thing stupid. Why would Copeland go, Sure. Let's fucking fight for it. That doesn't make any sense. And even if Garcia beat him, he still wouldn't have enough wins to be ranked. He'd have to beat him like a dozen times. He's also the number one contender in a different division. Go after the trios (laughs) belts, you moron. It makes Uh, Edge look like an idiot for accepting that. Like not wrong. I mean Well, he's gonna win, so Well of course he is. Which is another thing, by the way. It's like Edge is running through these young guys. He's just, every week he beats some young guy. Some point he's got to put someone over at some point, right? And Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be Christian. It should be a young guy. It better be like Nick Wayne down the road or something. I did laugh when he said, Daniel Garcia, you were trying to take food off of my family's table. Yeah. I'm pretty confident these the Copeland girls will be eating just fine. How much do they eat? No matter who wins or loses that match on Wednesday. Renee interviews Willow Nightingale, Chris Statlander, and Stokely Hathaway. The team is working out well, despite the tension Stokely had with, with uh, Willow at first. And there's jokes here about Julia Hart and uh, Sky Blue. And they uh, shop at hot, hot Topic. They listen to Evidescence. You're not badasses. The only two badasses are Chris and Willow. And uh, Willow explains that she thought Sky would be teaming with them, but she took a different path. And it hurts my feelings. So they've teamed, they've traveled, they've danced, but they've never fought. So let's make it official. And Stokely says, I would make it official, but Tony Tony Khan has me blocked. And there you go. 
<laughs> and then Tony Khan, uh, he he uh, agreed to the match on Twitter and then unblocked Stokely. So that's nice. Oh. <laughs> yes. There was a payoff. Yeah. I did not see that coming. I wonder if Stokely is one of those guys that, that Tony just blocked on accident like Dave does all the time. Big bad Brody King versus Mark Briscoe. Now here's a match I can get behind. Uh, oh, yeah. The crowd was not quiet for these two men. And when they were, they just said, okay, what does hit each other really, really hard and make use of the silence? So he uh, did that a lot. Uh, Mark was also using a chair like like as a noisemaker, like slapping it together to get the crowd to chant along. So he was playing cheerleader at the same time and uh, teased a table spot. But the referee says, no, it is not an ODQ match. So Mark encourages everyone to boo the ref just to make some kind of noise. And uh, eventually Brody takes over. And they are just having a hell of a match. A ta- the, the table is set up, and they did what Brian has talked about so much lately, where you set up the table and then f- ignore it for five or ten minutes. And it's a much bigger pop if somebody goes through it. Mark Briscoe goes to the top rope. Julia Hart gets up there to distract him. Brody comes up the other side and pushes Mark over Julia through the table. Which the camera totally missed because the camera was behind Brody. Fortunately, they did have a replay, and that table broke way too easy, and that looked brutal and violent and absolutely no fun. Yep. And uh, Brody screams something. It's about the eating same thing we've been talking about. It's like a thing now. If you're gonna break a table, have it be a spot where nobody sees it coming, because they always pop bigger for it. They've done it now. It's like a regular thing on TV now. They've done it like the last three straight shows. It's like a new spot. Mm-hmm. Not really new, but they're doing it frequently now. So Brody uh, pins him with a gonzo bomb, turned into a hell of a match. Hell of a match. And, Dude, this uh, match was great, and I wish they would do something with Mark Risco. He just, he's so fucking great, and he just goes out there and treads water and just loses all the time in the same spot, but god damn, he's great. He should be the Ring of Honor champion, or he should yeah, have won it earlier this year before the, uh, before Eddie's who run. Who is the Ring of Honor champion? Uh, Eddie Kingston. Well, Eddie, it's the it's Continental Crown Fair. thing. It's uh, part of it, yeah. yeah. It's. Uh, I think it's cool that they're gonna have Mark in a program with uh, with Brody King. I mean, that's got to be where it's going. He hasn't been in a program for Years. ever. Yeah, it's been a it's been a minute. So I'm I'm okay with this. That Gonzo bomb is unbelievably cool looking. He is a scary man, this Brody King. Uh, yeah. Then this goddamn Julia comes out and spiked him in the head. Yeah, and they shot it in a way. I think this was intentional, like the table spot. They shot it so Brody's giant body was blocking the spike actually going into his head. That's so good. They cut away and they cut back, and Mark is bleeding everywhere. And not only that, he's got a giant gash right here at the top of the head, which yeah. was funny. The announcers are going, "He's bleeding from right where he was struck." I was like, "Where else would he bleed from? You fucking put a hole right here. You want him to bleed from here? He's bleeding all over the place and." They cut away. That was disgusting. Yeah. That was Hit quite a bit of blood for that. I, I won't say it's a throwaway angle, but it was, it seemed Not unnecessary. Now. It seemed excessive blood blood loss for this particular bit of spot in the show. You got spiked in the fucking head, bro. What do you want? A surface wound? I don't know. I don't know. He was punk shirred. <laughs> Very serious. Then there's this Brian Keith. Oh, I like this guy. This was so yeah. great. He goes, I'm a bounty hunter. It's all about the payday. I'm here to climb the ranks. Here's another one. He's here to climb the ranks. He's not just going to ask for the title. He's going to climb them ranks. I'm going to collect my bounty. And he says, whether you're good, bad, or ugly, you better be ready to pay up. Sucker! Like, God damn. <laughs> so great. I need more from Brian Keith. So, so, so great. Straight out of Saturday Night's Main Event. They should have had animals oh, yeah. playing in the background. Yeah, where the Saturday night uh Saturday Night's Main Event opens lately. Did I miss it here today? I think they had it. The, the no, Saturday Night's Night for Fighting? No, no the, the where the guys do like the Saturday, Saturday night, night promos night. in the show. Oh, the, oh that opened the show. I have another yeah. in a couple weeks. I think. God damn, yeah. bring that back for Brian Keith. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. 
over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.